Uh, breaking news just hitting the tape. The State Department is saying the Russian government's assertions against U.S. citizens it wants to question are, quote, absurd. Sarah Sanders, the press secretary, just moments ago, uh, did bring, it did address the subject. It did come up during President Trump's meeting with Vladimir Putin. But Sarah Sanders said the president made no commitment about offering up any U.S. citizens for Russian questioning. So how do Russians, particularly Russian oligarchs and business leaders, perceive not only what happened at the summit in Helsinki, but President Trump's clarification that he does now blame Russia for disrupting our election? Let's go to Moscow, where we're joined by Andrei Kostin. He is chairman and president of VTB, Russia's second largest and state-owned bank. Uh, Andrei, great to see you. Thank you for joining us. Let's start with the latest news first. How do you and other Russians feel about what unfolded yesterday, where President Trump reversed his position and now says Russia, your country, is responsible for meddling in the 2016 presidential election? In most of the people in Russia, not only government, saying, we don't understand, we don't know any facts, we don't uh, have any information about this. And so I think the elections uh, and the um, election of Mr. Trump, uh, that, that, that was the wish of American people at the end of the day. And whatever problem you have domestically, uh, you know, conflict between the Democrats and the Republicans, Mr. Trump, that's completely, of course, uh, your matter. But Russia cannot influence these processes. And if some foolish uh, people try to do it, I think that absolutely useless uh, exercise. Well, let me go to the outrage here in the U.S. by many after the Helsinki summit that it was over this sense that President Trump was either subservient to Russia or scared to take Putin on regarding what U.S. intelligence says is proof Russian agents tried to affect our election. Did Russians view President Trump that way Monday? How did they see how he appeared at the Helsinki summit? Not really. I think he, he confirmed his position. He was quite outspoken on his position on Crimea, on other things. We don't think that he surrendered in, in, in any way. I mean, uh, you know, Mr. Trump is an emotional person. He can say certain things we, and then correct uh, them the next day. But uh, we didn't see any, anything uh, specifically different in his position. And uh, I think he's a tough negotiator. And mm -hmm. I think if we want to continue discussion, that, that there'll be further tough negotiations with Mr. Trump. But, you know, frankly speaking, we, we are a little bit um, um, unpleasantly surprised because of the level of anti-Russian feelings. So we are not at war. We are not shooting each other. We are not even have a, a big trade surplus, as Chinese are, for example. And we are made responsible for, for all evils. We can't really very much understand. Well, uh, let's go to that angle about the sanctions against more than 100 Russian businesses and Russian oligarchs, Russian business leaders like yourself. You have been sanctioned since we last spoke to you. Tell me how that's affected you personally and then VTB Bank. Very wrong and bad decision. So you don't. I have no reason uh, to uh, to be happy with uh, with uh, Mr. Trump uh, administration because they put me on the list for God no reason. But frankly speaking, it didn't very much, uh, fortunately, affect the activity of my bank. As a personally, you know, I, I was preparing for sanctions since uh, 2014. Mm -hmm. We don't expect that uh, Congress and Mr. Trump will lift uh, um, will lift uh, sanctions. I think we should go a long way before that to improve our relationship, to, to start to talk in different areas. I'm very glad that I think both Pentagon and Russian Ministry of Defense confirmed that they are ready to talk. We should talk more about Syria, about disarmament, uh, about other important issues before. And then we create a certain level, at least, of trust or a certain level of communication. And then probably the issue of sanctions could be on the agenda. But I think it will take time. I was not responsible for any decisions here. I'm a banker and I was punished just as a, as a part of the team, you know, who should be punished for one other reason. We need to talk. Unless you talk, you will mm -hmm. never resolve any problem. That's my point of view. We're having a very fine conversation here. We always do, you and I. But why do you think President Putin seemed so visibly agitated when he was being asked tough questions by my colleague Chris Wallace on Fox News? 
Well, I don't think it, it very much relates to Mr. Putin directly somehow, because I think he gave an answer that unfortunately there are people are killed sometimes, there is a criminal, and some people they are maybe playing too risky games, not necessarily. They might be opponents of Mr. Putin, but they might be opponents to some other people. I'm, I'm quite sure that Mr. Putin is not the man who is killing his opponents. That's, I, I'm, I'm 100 percent sure. Uh, and and uh, whatever you think, Russia enjoys a lot of uh, political freedoms, and I can talk freely, you can talk freely here, uh, you can have access to, and you know, I don't see this, it's definitely not the right opinion to see that Mr. Putin is killing somebody in Russia. That's absolutely fake news. Uh, fake news is going crazy, as, as Mr. Trump recently put it this way. Um, all right. We could go around and around that for a long time, but journalists uh, that we have known have, have ended up dead. And so this is this is a touchy subject, I understand. But uh, as we finish up here, what is your number one economic concern right now when it comes to Russia, which is really struggling? We have lower oil prices and then the sanctions are uh, sort of hamstringing a lot of companies for doing business in other nations, particularly here in the U.S. Well, you see, of course, we would definitely would like to see more cooperation with American companies. We are not happy that some American companies had to withdraw from Russian market because of the sanctions. Well, on the other hand, the uh, Russian economy is doing... Uh, uh, reasonably well. I mean, we expect uh, slightly less than 2% GDP growth this year. The banking sector is growing mm -hmm. uh, quite well. I mean, we, we already in six months of this year, we made m the same profit as, as, as we made uh, in 12 months last year. So it's not so bad. I mean, uh, the oil price are quite reasonable, and I don't think we expect very much higher prices for this. So no, I, I think uh, there's not too much concern about the economic situation. Andre, uh, thank you very much much for joining us. Sorry about Croatia beating Russia. I'm, I'm sure that, that, was a, that was a tough loss, I am sure, but uh, great to have you here. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I, I, I'd love sanctions against me to be removed by the, by the, um, by the championship uh, World Cup when it takes place in America. That's, let, let's be I mean, waiting for this, I think, All right. for this if, moment. If they are lifted Thank you very on much, you, Lise. Always a pleasure. Uh, you are welcome to come back here to Fox Business Network. Thank you. Okay. Thanks a lot.